Hey everybody, welcome to another video here on the 67 Stang channel. So we're actually going to be installing those seats from TMI. My wife got me for Christmas, so let's go get into it, shall we? Okay guys, as I said, we're going to be working on installing those seats that my wife got me from TMI. Um, the, the pony seats, the sports seats, I forget the exact name of them, but the one thing I found, and you'll see this at some point in the video, I hope, is that the seats just don't mount right in. They, they don't fit in the, the holes that go through the floor pan on the seat riser. Uh, they're off by just a, a fraction, and maybe I could wiggle it around and get them to fit, but um, they're just off. The other part is, uh, as you'll see, that there's some obstructions with the seat belt uh, so I don't have the uh, just always out kind of seat belts I got the one that's got the retractor on it uh, that was part of the sport spritz package that came with the car sorry about the noise neighbors building a new deck next door but across the street uh, so I had some problems with that again you'll hopefully see that uh, and then the armrest as well so I have to I'm gonna have to make some brackets that are going to allow the seat to sit back a little bit further as well as raise it up. These seats sit about an inch lower than the original seats. So raising them back up should allow some clearance on the seat belt uh, extractor or retractor, I guess, and some other things. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead, I'll uh, hopefully show you the test fitting of the seat on the passenger side, uh, show you with the props and the fitment, and then we'll get into some of the other things about the brackets and all that. So. Uh, Let's go on to doing that now. So, okay, so we've got the seat up here, ready to get things installed on it. Before we get started, though, we'll talk about a few tools, because I've already done this on the passenger seat, this is the driver's side seat, that I know you're going to need. So one is some sort of hammer. I've got a rubber mallet here. Uh, you'll see how we use that to adjust the uh, sliders so we can get the screws in. We need at least I recommend a couple of pairs of pliers. I've got a needle nose and a regular pair. Uh, again, this is for the spring that does the lever action. I found it's a little long. You may need to adjust it. So I've got those there. You'll need a good old Phillips head screwdriver. And then a, well, I'm using a big flat blade screwdriver as a pry bar uh, to get the sliders where they need to be. So. These are the tools you're going to need. Um, for sure, I have a tap and die set here that I use to just chase the threads out uh, on here. Just to make sure they're clean. The, is it needed? Probably not. I'm overly cautious. So anyway, uh, got that. There. Okay, so first thing, get the seat in a seated upright position. They come laid out flat. so. Just using the lever on the side here to, to lay it out. And then we're going to flip it onto its back so we can get to the bottom where the runners are going to go. So you'll see that you've got the brackets on the bottom here for installing the sliders or runners. Okay. Now here are, I think I showed these when I did the unboxing, but here are the instructions that they provide from TMI. They're not the greatest things in the world. They don't coincide with what's on CJ Pony Parts website for installing the seats and the runners on there. Um, so anyway, but they give you some rough idea. Part of the reason I'm doing the video. So the first side we're going to want to install is the one that has the lever on it. Now this should be facing towards the front of the seat like this. So uh, in this case, it's going to kind of go on this side here, which should match. You know, it's the left side, right? So left side of the seat is where this goes. And the one without the handle, which is this one, is going to mount on the other side. Again, with the mechanism all going on to the inside. Now here is one of the differences between the instructions is this spring or wire or whatever you want to call it that ties this together 
over here with this, right? Um, they just show a bar, they don't show the spring, they show one is bent this way and one's bent that way. This doesn't do that, so that doesn't match up. And this is what I had to adjust on the other seat. It was too long this way to get the lever to actuate the, the, this side properly. So no big deal, just take some bending. Um, but we'll get to that in a moment. And then we're going to get our little hardware set out that includes not just the hardware in there, but also, if you don't already have one, an Allen wrench, which you use to tighten these things up. So, what you need to do, uh, first off, is to slide this down and then move the slider up. There go. So that the hole here is exposed. Now, what you'll see here, as I, if I can get this down, is the difference, right? That was a single hole. The one up at the top has, oops, I'm going to pinch myself. There we go. Is uh, oblong, so it has adjustment in it. So I suggest putting the bottom one in first, and then you have some time slide or room to adjust to put in the top one. Okay, almost there. Okay. So with that, let's pull out one of our screws. Allen wrench, which of course I just don't That started. I, I don't want it to be too tight because I want to be able to adjust. Move the slider down. Get another screw. both of them are in. I'm going to push that back up to tighten this in. I'm sure that one's going to be tight. Uh, and you can see how this, hopefully you can see, just locks these. Let me get the light. Let me get the light over here a little bit better. So, like over here, so you can see this better. You can see that this comes out and just got those two flanges or tabs that slide into the tabs of the slots here, and that's what locks that in place. So there you go. We got the first slider on. Now we're gonna put the other side on. Now this is something I'm gonna try a little different. Or go ahead and adjust. I didn't do this way on the other one. Um, so you got these little clips. There's actually two here. I thought that was just one, but there's two little retainer clips right there that hold that in place. You need to push this down to get those over there, and this is where the, the pliers can kind of come in handy. Here is to squish that down enough to get those rings over that. It's one. Two, so those are over that. So I'm going to 
look at here is Check and see how these are in place. Is that going to be enough to actually? I need to bend them some. So you may need to bend this in a little bit more. Put these in. I'll pick that off for a second. This is where that pry bar comes in handy because trying to actuate this with your hand doesn't work that easily. But if I take slip the screwdriver in, and I can slide this in. That. 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 Allows me to slide that up to expose this. screw in there now hopefully with that in place get the piece of wire in there and then kind of see holding this in is that going to be enough Is that now keep in mind these are not at the same height and location? Is that going to be enough? Or do I need to bend it? Oh, actually, it can stand to be that over now. I said the, it's not exactly where it's going to be because of the. okay I think so anyway we're going to down so this is where you can use if you have to rubber ballot to slide that down if need be and put the other no, nope, that's going to have to be. That's definitely going to need to be shortened. Well, let me try to get the, well, get those in there. Anyway, we go get this in, and we'll talk about the screw next. Once I get that screw in there, we'll uh, spring here next. Okay, so I've got the wire uh, in there that connects the two things. So, got a dog shaking. What you got to do when you're setting this up and getting this tension right on here is make sure that you have the, uh, the latch here with the teeth in it matched up in the same slots on each side. So in this case I've got one, two, three, four, five. So the first one is on the fifth slot here. One, two, three, four, five. The fifth one there. That keeps these all even uh, in there. And then, you know, what I did is you bend, you move the lever up and you see at what point does it actuate the release, right? You don't want it to be too soon and you don't want it to be that you have to go all the way over. Uh, the way this wire is set, uh, without adjusting it, bending it, um, I literally had to 
go all the friggin' way up to get it to release, and I don't want to have to go that far. So now it comes up you know, right about uh, there. So a little bit around 45 to 50 you know, degrees, if that's you know, zero, you go up. So about halfway between it and straight up is where that releases and should be able to slide, which I think is, is good enough. That's what I'm thinking. Anyway, again, no expert uh, on there. Try to make sure that's in place so it doesn't you know, come loose. But you know, if it does come loose, it doesn't mean the lock won't work. Okay, so the next piece we have is the cover that goes on this side. So that's what we need Mr. Phillips Ed uh, for. Uh, so with that, let's get that going next. I'll get those pieces up here. Okay, so this is the cover piece that goes over here on the lever that raises and lowers the back of the seat. Um, it has two screws that hold it in, so you're going to have a screw that goes up here, and then one that goes in uh, down here, which matches up with the hole right there, and then the hole right there. So what I found is, let's see if I can remember how I did this, to, to fit this on here, you slide it, you know, kind of slide it on this, and then uh, try to bring it around to get things lined up where they match up to the holes. I found getting this one in first is the easiest. And just taking our Phillips head. Driver. Get that screw started. Ooh, get that in. I'm going to tighten this one up. And then lastly, there is the lever. So it's got finger notches which point down and a hole here that coincides with the hole in the lever that the screw goes in. You just slide that on and match the hole there. got it all put together gives you that nice finished look over there so we can now raise and lower the seat easily so there we go that's how we kind of put these things together next step would be installing them in the car which we will do later so we'll get into that part next okay so test fitting the seats in the car Found a couple of things, so I'm doing the passenger side first, you can see um, here. So first off, you'll notice the seat belts. Now if you don't have these auto retracting seat belts, or you don't have ones that have the big sleeve here, this won't be probably an issue. But you can see down in there that this is hitting on this, uh, with the seat moved uh, back a good bit. So that's going to be an issue to... I'm going to have to address. Of course, just don't move the seat all the way back, I guess, is one way to deal with that. But that's kind of defeats the purpose. The other problem I have found with this, and again, I'm doing this without a bracket. And this may be why they require a bracket. You get down here, or maybe see it. So what I'm finding is that the initial the studs on the front, the only one, I don't know if you can see that down there, okay? They're about a quarter of an inch too close together. They need to be out to fit, fit with the other ones, which might be another reason you need the bracket. It just won't fit. Now the backs are fine. I got the backs in fine. There. Um, the measurements I took to see how the fit goes between what you see with the original seat and 
the new seat are not that much different. I mean, if you pull back to here, you can kind of see that they're, you know, about in the same location there. So I think that's probably going to be okay. And what I found, if I bring my measurements out here, that if I measure, this out. If I measure from the door sill there to the front of the seat here on the original seat I got about 15 and a quarter inches on this new seat I'm getting 13 and 5 eighths inches so yes the seat is a bit further forward which again on the driver's side with the steering wheel that might be a problem but from the passenger side that seems to be okay but like I said, I'm still going to need a bracket because of that, and then the front studs don't seem to line up. Now, I will find out if there's some play um, where I can adjust those sliders a little bit, but I'm not sh thinking there is. So, we may have to be putting a bracket in because of those things. But overall, I think the seat looks really good in the car. I think that white just really sets things off a good bit. I like it. I was kind of nervous about putting the white in there, but overall, I think this looks pretty darn good. So, anyway, I'm going to probably call it a day right now because it's getting late in the afternoon and I've got Christmas decorations to take down. So, we'll see what we get to next. Hey, everybody. So, um, continuing with the install of the TMI seats that I'd gotten for Christmas and I'd mentioned earlier, I think I did anyway, when I was showing you the test fit of the passenger side that I was going to need some brackets. And um, there are a couple of reasons for that. I don't know if I mentioned them or not because that was a week, you know, several weeks ago now. But the reason we needed uh, our brackets are a couple of things. One, the posts on the seat itself here, at least on the passenger side, were about a quarter inch off um in total uh, both sides so i couldn't make the those fit uh, so that's one reason to get the the connecting nuts bolts whatever uh, in the right position that's one thing the other part i was having is clearance with the side of the seat where the lever is and the seat belt retractor on this that side as well as the bolster of the seat there was hitting the armrest so by putting the bracket in it's going to raise the seat up, move it back a little bit, um, and then allow me to get the spacing I need to put, you know, the actual seat in the holes on the car. So that's important, obviously. So I'm making the brackets. Um, what am I making the brackets out of? So I've got a th 3 8 inch steel bar, and I have 1 8 inch steel bar that I'm using. I'm also using some 5 16 20, I think it's 5 16 20, um, all thread here. There we go, get it to focus. So using this. What I've done here, and my design has been evolving as I've been doing it. So this one on the driver's side outside part of the seat was the first one I did. So what I've done is I've taken the 3 8 here I've mated it to the 1 8 here. Now I did that for a couple of reasons. One is that gives more for this stud that's gonna go in and actually hold the seat in the car to grip onto, right? So there's more bite, because this is actually a drilled and tapped hole that I've screwed it in and then I've welded that all thread in through the top. So that should hold it. The next part of the, the additional 1 8 is you've got to have a nut, right, to hold the seat in, to the bracket. Well, if I didn't have this or this, you know, gusset plate, whatever you want to call it, then the seat is going to be sitting directly on, um, or this nut is going to sit directly on the carpet, and in my mind that was going to wear out the carpet. So the other part to this is that this also provides additional support for somebody sitting in the seat. This is resting on the seat riser in the car, right? So that, you know, it's again distributing the weight a little bit more evenly. At least that was my thought. Um, this gap here is where I learned something. It was a goof. I thought for some reason that the seat, you know, the stud from the seat would actually come through here 
Um, and so I had originally welded this eighth inch plate all the way back. Um, turned out I know it comes out back here where you can see it. So I had to cut that section back out, uh, left this open. It's, you know, again, not optimal, but not worth in my mind because I've got this uh, in there. Uh, again, eighth inch, five sixteenths, uh, 20 tapped hole, welded all thread. And then this is coming through on the back. Uh, here's my second bracket. It's a little bit, let me move back so you can see the whole thing, a little bit better. Uh, again, I learned a good bit. One thing I also learned is that welded metal gets hot and you should not touch it. Or let's see if you can see, and I got a little bit of a blister on my finger there. Yeah, no fun. Um, anyway, so again, did the eighth inch uh, on top of the three eighths here, drilled and tapped drilled another hole for the seat bolt to come through. Uh, I gave me plenty of room because I didn't know exactly where that hole needed to be. Because I did this each in steps, and I'll show you those steps in just a moment. So again, back here, but notice this time I've got just one whole bar coming through. Again, it's probably overkill, probably don't need that much. Matter of fact, the template um, I got from uh, Dave on the inline six forums and I'll put his full name somewhere in, in the video here but here's the template he kind of provided me with so thank you Dave for, for this but uh, you can see he doesn't have those extra plates he's just using the five eighths I'm sorry the three eighths inch uh, bar which again you know he's a better machinist than I am I may have gone overkill but anyway so you've got that there, just want to show that. So anyway, you can see again, uh, welded, not the best welds in the world. I'm not the greatest welder, but you know, again, my thought is this is just holding weight. This is, this part here is being held in by the threaded stud as well as the fact that that stud is welded too. So, and I've got, you know, weld going here and here and all the way back down here. And so I'm pretty sure that these welds, while again, not the prettiest in the world, will work. So, um, I'm pretty happy. Now, the other thing I learned in doing these brackets is we're looking here is you've got to check the clearance of the, you know, the seat um, adjusters, right? So you want to make sure you, when you put these on and get them bolted down, you can test. You can see the passenger or the inboard side is fine. The outboard side is fine. Now, I did find I needed to chamfer this edge or put a bevel on it. I call it chamfer because I used to do AutoCAD work and that was the command. But yeah, you chamfer this, basically I rounded it over uh, so that there was enough clearance here to allow that adjuster to slide out. So that works well. Now, um, the one thing I have found, and this is probably back to my methodology, was I kind of assumed that each side of the seat was going to be the same and it's turning out not quite to work that way. Um, I haven't test fitted this yet. I got it in the car last night. Uh, so I know everything that the bolts here line up with the bolt holes on the um, car. Uh, I had the seat bolted to this, so that worked. What I did find is I actually had to move this forward a little bit. Um, from where this was into a point where this wouldn't, you know, the, this wouldn't lock into place. So I've done a little bit of tweaking here to allow for a little bit more adjustment um, on that. So we'll see how that works in a minute. But let's talk about the tools I've used to, to do this. So you can see over there, I've got my welder, a loose vise, <laughs> and my grinder. So used all of those uh, items there. Uh, to weld things together and then clean them up, use both a cutting disc and a uh, slap uh, disc on there to clean things up and cut the, the bars because the bars came in two feet sections. So, uh, and I should mention that each, each one of these is uh, about 11 inches in length. So just so you know what dimensions are. So I got... Um, was it four 18 inch pieces of the three eighths and two two foot sections of the eighth just to give me some extra. I actually got five of the three eighths just in case I goofed 
beyond recovery. So I had some extra there, but that's kind of what I'm doing. So let's talk about the other tools because I actually had to buy some to do this, which meant I probably spent more than the cost of just buying the brackets off of someplace like CJ Pony Parts. But I didn't have nearly as much fun getting to play with all my tools. So we'll go back here to my little shops area. Y'all have seen this before. So there's one of the tools, a drill press to make sure I got those holes drilled nice and reasonably straight. I had to get a drill press. So this is one from Harbor Freight. It was their cheapest one. It's worked mostly fine. Uh, I'm still trying to figure it out and how it works because it does five speeds. But let's see. there we go. Um, it's belt driven, so you got to adjust the belts to change the speeds. And it's got a little chart up in there for that. But again, pretty good drill press. No problems really with that other than sometimes I think the power is not enough. But we did that. Of course, I've used my bench grinder to help clean things up and all that. Here's one of my extra bars up there. Not the rebar. Rebar is for when I would used to survey. Anyway, found that clean up stuff. Uh, of course, my battery operated drill to help clean some things out. And of course, the biggest thing and then what the hardest is, is a tap and die set. So there's the five, uh, 15 sixteenths or five sixteenths, five sixteenths and uh, the 20 you know, tap there. But having to tap those holes out for those studs was a pain there. I had also bought a Harbor Freight tap and die set, which was a piece of garbage. It was one of their cheaper models, I guess. And the last thing I went ahead and bought myself some new drill bits to drill the holes with. So, yeah, that's all the tools I used for uh, this project uh, to make these brackets. So now I'm going to go back to test fitting and seeing how my adjustments worked with the driver's side seat. Okay, for some reason I can't find the video of the test fit, but um, it didn't go quite as well as we had hoped. Uh, it took several more fiddling with the brackets to try to get it to fit and get the enough adjustment for it to slide in. So uh, I decided to go slightly different with my methodology when doing the passenger side. So we'll jump in and talk about how we did the passenger side now. Okay, so continuing to work on the brackets here on the passenger side, I'm test fitting uh, the the two brackets for making sure where I've got the holes that go through the floorboard fit. They seem to. Uh, I've also got the back holes drilled for the seat um, to mount into. So now I'm going to be working on where the holes go on for the um, front bolt of the seat. So I'll be taking some measurements. What I want to do is verify that whole distance from there to there. Uh, I'm going to go to the seat and measure where the front bolts distance are across here as well as the distance from the back to the front and try to figure out where those front holes need to be so maybe I don't have to elongate them quite as much as I did on the front. I'm sorry on the driver's seat that you see mounted in over there. Anyway, so we're going to keep uh, going and uh, see how it goes. Okay, so got the brackets for the seats uh, pretty much fabricated at this point. Now I'm just going to check some measurements here I took while I was in the car. So I've got my little cheat sheet here. Let's see if you can see this. So this is where I measured it, where I laid the brackets when I just had uh, the, the studs that go through the floor pan in the car. Um, i take that back. Let me back this up. So this is actually the studs here on the seat, right, that I measured the distances uh, across this way, across this way, of course, this way, and then I measured diagonals as well, just to make sure that I could get this all to, to fit. Okay, um, I did also measure the, the brackets in the car. So this is where the uh, studs are that go through the floor pans here to make sure I've got those distances, right? So the distances um, between this one and this one and that one 
and that one. So um, obviously I've got these in here uh, where they measure and fit. So now what I need to do is check, because I, I know the distance this way is good because I already got that in the car. So now I've got to check the distance going across this way to make sure they're correct. So I'm going to go down here. Let me get my tape measure out. Try and do this one-handed. So my first measurement should be 13 and 7 eighths. So I'm trying to get this on the center of the stud. And looking here, okay, so I'm a little, I need to come out. Let me get that back on there. So it's pretty darn, it's close. It might actually fit. So the other one is also 13 and 7 eighths. Double check all these things because the front seat wasn't this accurate or this consistent. Uh, so we're in the ballpark with an eighth, so we might be able to fit this in. So we might be time for a test fit. Okay, well, let's pick up the seat and go see how it fits in the car. Okay, so we got it in the car. It's fitting pretty darn nice. Now I can go in and finish up the, the bracket, uh, weld the studs in, and uh, do a little bit more finish work, and we can bolt it in the car. Okay, so we got the brackets painted and fitted onto the seat. So hopefully, after the last test fit, it should just slide in the car. Sort of. Hopefully. Okay, so now let's take it and get it into the car. Okay, we got her bolted in. So both the new TMI seats are in there. Got to put the console back, but uh, then I think we're ready to go for a drive. See how well these seats ride. enjoying a little cruise here and then we'll be back at the house. Back 
back in the neighborhood. That was a fun ride. These seats are absolutely phenomenal. I'm thoroughly enjoying them. They're so much more comfortable. It was well worth the investment. Of course, we did pick them up for a steal, as I said in the first video, where we were kind of reviewing them. Wife got them for about a thousand dollars off what they're going for now. So, certainly worth the money. Well, speaking of the wife, I see she is back home now. And she's way over on this side of the driveway. So there you have it guys, we got the seats on the car and oh my god, they're just, I know I've already said it, it was, they're phenomenal. Um, I would give them a thumbs up now, uh, for sure. They're not cheap as I've said, but uh, big improvement over those original seats. No doubt about it, I'm very happy. Thank you to my lovely and amazing wife who got those for me for Christmas. Like I said, you can buy the brackets if you want to. They're about $250, $260. Uh, from CJ, Pony Parts, or TMI. But, you know, I, I enjoy making them myself. And again, sorry about the noise. Um, I, I learned some good things with fabrication. Are they perfect? No, they're not perfect. But again, they're under the seats. Who's going to see them? So, anyway, I'm very happy. Enjoy driving the car. My wife even got to take her for a drive. That's the first time somebody's driven this car besides me since I got it running going up four years ago now? I think that's right, four years ago since uh, I first got her starting and moving again, so hi so's. So with that guys, I hope you liked the video. Uh, feel free to leave a comment down below. Let me know if you have any questions about the seats and the brackets. Uh, try to put enough information in there so you get the dimensions and things for those. So um, don't forget our merch store. Uh, link is down below in the description for that. So shirts and cups and stickers and things like that uh, help me continue. My next project is going to get those Dakota digital gauges installed. So hopefully I can get that done. I do have to go um, out of town for some conferences coming up. So it may be a little while before I get to those. But anyway, guys, thanks. And I'll see you all in the next video.